So first up, we have Jose Villa. Uh, he's going to talk about how to publish a Dart package on the pub.dev website, which uh, I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, Jose currently works as an Android engineer at Backbase and is the lead Android instructor for a nonprofit coding program in Long Island City that helps members of underrepresented communities find their dream jobs in tech. So let's give a big Flutter NYC welcome to Jose. Cool, thank you very much everyone. Um, as, uh, as Martin mentioned, my name is Jose, um, and uh, I'm going to be going over uh, the lecture for tonight, which is called From Package to Pub, uh, Creating Flutter APIs. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you have used uh, the pub site to look up APIs for putting in your Flutter apps? Put show of hands. Cool, very cool. Uh, how many of you uh, found that there were, uh, there were some things that you liked and you liked the integrating, but there were some that you thought, well, maybe if I put my own spin on it, maybe I can make something a bit more productive. Thank you. Good. How many of you thought the, had the idea of trying to make your own um, and weren't sure how to start? Good. Well, uh, I'm here to tell you that it's really not that hard. Uh, and we're going to go over that today. Cool. So, uh, so tonight we're going to talk about uh, Flutter packages, but what are they exactly, right? Uh, packages are a form of modular code. Uh, in other words, it's uh, code that's organized in a way that makes it easier to share with others. Uh, so we could ask other people to just give us their code, right? Uh, we can maybe um, you know, ask a friend or we can go on a website uh, where you can just copy something from Stack Overflow. Um, but it would probably be easier if someone shared that information to us or gave us the ability to integrate that into our apps um, in an easier, more useful way. Uh, and that's essentially what packages do. So where could you find these Flutter packages? Uh, they can be found on the pub.dev website, as was mentioned earlier and uh, download it into your project via declared dependency in your uh, YAML file, your pubspec.yaml file. Uh, you can even find them on GitHub and add the repositories directly into your dependencies. How many have done that before in your pubspec.yaml? Did you know you can do that? Well, it's pretty cool and you can. Uh, so uh, I definitely, uh, definitely want you guys to try that out uh, when we're done with this talk. What's the advantage of uh, the advantage of doing that is, let's say you want to create a um, you want to create a dependency, but you don't necessarily want to put it on the uh, pub website just yet. You can keep it on GitHub, experiment with it, and when you're ready for the rest of the world to see it, you can then uh, put it on pub. But you might want to create something that's proprietary and you don't necessarily want to share with others. Um, that's the benefit. Um, but the benefit that I use for it, uh, and hopefully you will as well, is if you're working on creating a test app, an example app that you want to put in a project like this, uh, and you haven't quite put it on the pub, store, pub uh, page yet, you can do it that way. So uh, the pub.dev site uh, lists packages available for use within your application. So whether that's a Flutter app, uh, a web app, or uh, anything in between. You can also find some of the most robust plugins. Oh, sorry. You can also find some of the most robust plugins uh, on this site. Sorry, so this is the Dart Packages uh, pub.dev site, and this is GitHub. Uh, how many of you have been to uh, Flutter slash plugins? How many of you were led there, right? So many great plugins there. They have so many great Firebase pl based plugins there as well. Uh, you can definitely check it out. And if you subscribe uh, to watching Flutter plugins, I guarantee you you'll get 10 posts a day in your mailbox of something new that's coming around and being updated. Right, so uh, so these you can find on GitHub, and uh, and they're really easy to find. You can just search for them, or you can type in uh, Flutter slash plugins on GitHub. Uh, but I'll do you one better. Why Flutter packages? Right? Why are we doing this? Well, uh, because you can't do it all. You can't. Right? Flutter is built on the concept of leaning on composition, right? But there's nowhere in the documentation that says that you have to do the comp composing for yourself, right? Other people can do it for you, and then you could integrate their hard work into making your app quicker and more robust. Uh, also, uh, if you're making an app not just for Android, but also for iOS, you might not be familiar with those frameworks, and those frameworks change all the time. You might not be comfortable making a, a platform channel to connect directly to the camera on a device, for example, or, uh, or some other uh, device-based thing that you're not terribly familiar with. Uh, but there is a package for that. 
and, uh, and it's dangerous out there, so you don't want to go alone, you want to take something. So uh, finally, who's allowed to make Flutter packages? Everyone's allowed, and anyone can do it. Absolutely anyone can make a Flutter package. You can push it to the pub site uh, and make it accessible to uh, countless Flutter developers. Uh, all you have to do is just add it as a dependency and then run uh, pub get and pub update. Uh, in other words, this isn't something that's off limits or impossible to do. It's, it's for everyone and it can be created for everyone. So for today's discussion, we're going to split up packages into two main subdivisions. Plug-in packages, which can, through the use of platform channels, provide a means of communication between your Dart code and the platform-specific native code of your particular platform. So iOS, Android, maybe Fuchsia? eventually, right? Uh, but there's also uh, Dart packages, and these are general packages written in Dart for use, uh, by frameworks that utilize Dart. So not just Flutter, but uh, also Angular Dart. Aqueduct is a, is a great backend framework that utilizes Dart. Uh, some of these packages, though, uh, may contain Flutter-specific functionality. So even though it's written in Dart and you can import it into your Dart project, it might not be of, of use to you. It might just be something that's, uh, that's specific to the Flutter framework, and that's okay, but you just need to be mindful of that when you're integrating it into your app. So, how can we finally make one? Well, let's create a Dart package together. You can create one from scratch via the command line where you're just typing it into uh, the, uh, the bash console, uh, but honestly I prefer the IDE. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, especially if you're using Android Studio. Uh, other, uh, other IDEs allow you to do that, but I feel like Android Studio is a little easier for me uh, because I come from an Android development background. Uh, so you simply open up Android Studio and select New Flutter Project, and it'll bring you to a, uh, so, uh, it'll bring you to a screen like this. Um, and you'll see four different possibilities for a Flutter project, right? You'll see a Flutter application, which is for making Flutter apps, with which you're hopefully familiar. Uh, there's Flutter modules, uh, which is a way to make a component that you can add to an iOS or Android app. Uh, there's a plugin, which we mentioned previously, which is for, um, for cr uh, creating connections between uh, the native layer and, uh, and the Flutter layer. And then there's a, a, a Flutter package, which is exclusive to uh, writing Dart code and utilizing uh, for Dart. So, uh, so we created it, but what are we gonna actually create this project? Well, for this example, I thought uh, we'd have a little fun with it. Uh, and you might have seen uh, Lorem Ipsum uh, when you're trying to create a filler uh, content for your apps. Uh, so uh, I'm a really big fan of pets and pet tech, uh, so I thought I'd make something called uh, Lorem Putsum. And, uh, and this gives you the opportunity to, uh, to fill in uh, animal baby names. Uh, so whether it's like uh, things like a puppy or a kitten or a piglet or an aeus, which is actually the name for a baby eagle or bird of prey. Uh, and also, let's say you want a random picture. Uh, you can just find like a random pet picture. And I think this would be a cool uh, project to work on. So in this screen, we have uh, the project name, which we write in underscores, Lorem Cutesum. Uh, we uh, then also have a description. So you want to write something that's useful to people uh, that they can just read it in one sentence and it makes sense to them. And in this case, I'm writing a description that, uh, that states a Flutter package for, uh, to, uh, that obtains uh, cute baby animal image URL strings and lorem ipsum style filler text. I guarantee you, you will not find it anywhere else. So, there are only two, technically, only two required files and folders for making a package. A lib folder uh, with a Dart file inside, uh, which makes sense because uh, you're creating something that should be written in Dart code, so you need at least one Dart file, right? And then you also need a clearly defined pubspec file. So a pubspec.yaml file, uh, containing information such as the name of the package, its use, the version, uh, its environment and things of that sort. Right, so this is a, an example of a pubspec.yaml file, uh, and we see the typical keys of name, description, and version. You'll notice that I started with 1.0.0, and I'll go into that later, uh, rather than starting with 0.0.1. How many of you are familiar with the, the concept of uh, semantic versioning, right? Okay, so we're following uh, the concept of major, major, minor, patch, 
Uh, and if, you, if you're not sure whether the uh, package you're making uh, is ready for prime time, as it were, uh, you could keep it as uh, zero major, zero minor, and then patch, or at the very least, uh, zero major, uh, one minor, and then zero patch, right? Uh, but if you're confident, you say, I've created something that's simple enough uh, that's not really gonna, um, gonna need that much change early on, you could start with one, and it actually helps with, uh, with your score in the, the pub website. So, what does a default package build look like? Uh, well, once created, the IDE should create all accompanying required files and folders. Uh, it should create for you a lib folder uh, containing a Dart file uh, named after your package project and a test folder uh, containing a Dart file for adding Dart unit tests. And this is important uh, because uh, this can be sort of a secret trap if you're not careful. So look out for this when you modify your package to also modify your test folder. So the default Dart file contains code for a calculator, uh, which means that even though you called it something, it's not empty. Uh, it's there for a reason. It's sort of letting you know what you're to look forward to. And it's something that you should need to modify. So let's replace it with new code, right? But before we do that, let's look at the first line. On line one, it says library lorem underscore qtim. So it tells you your package name for your project, right? Uh, but it's also letting uh, the framework know that this is just not a typical app. This is an actual uh, library for getting information and utilizing as a library. So we can delete the code. Everything that says class calculator, we can delete all that. But just be mindful that we'll have to come back and also adjust the test as well. So this might be uh, hard to see for, um, for those in the, in the back. Uh, unless you can look on that TV and you're closer over there. Uh, but ultimately, this is our entire package. It consists of uh, a class definition. Uh, it consists of two static uh, collections, right? So one is a list of strings representing uh, URLs for, uh, for cute animal baby pictures, right? And the other one is a list of uh, animal baby names. Uh, both of which are truncated, just so we can all fit on this slide, because there are about 100 of these pictures to start out. Uh, and then there are two, uh, there are two functions, right? two methods, uh, one of which is called random image URL, uh, which just picks a random image and then uh, returns that URL, and another one uh, that returns a, um, a list of uh, lorem ipsum text. Right? So it's a full string that it returns that, at minimum, contains 10 words. Um, uh, but you could always put more uh, numbers in there, you could put a higher number or a lower number, and it will supply you uh, the, the string you're looking for. All right, so now, right, all good apps, just like all good apps, all good packages uh, require a bit of testing to confirm that what you've written actually does the thing you expected, right? So, uh, so let's add some. So you could actually go to, uh, to another uh, directory which has uh, your tests in there. Uh, it's called Flutter Test. Um, and if you go in there, uh, you can uh, delete all the contents of it and add your own tests. And in this case, we added three. Uh, as you can see, we have a method called test, uh, and it has two parameters, which might be different uh, for someone who has a uh, Java background, right? If you have a Java background, you generally think of uh, you know, your test in JUnit is being written in a particular way. This is written in a slightly different way. Uh, the first uh, parameter is a string, essentially describing the test and what it does. And the second one uh, is a, uh, a function uh, that's, uh, that you then fill with, uh, with capability, right? So in this case, we start out with creating a variable that actually calls lorem cutesum. It turns it into a list and then it counts how many of the, uh, those words are actually in there. Uh, so then we confirm that if you just run that method, uh, that the number of words that are going to be in that list are going to be 10, because that's the minimum that we set in the uh, optional named parameter. Right? And there are two others uh, that are useful to us. So the next step is adding documentation. 
It's not enough to write your code, and it's not enough to test it. You want to be able to write uh, API notes so that people can see it and make use of it. Right? So when you're writing comments to put in the documentation that's going to be converted into a website that will then be seen by, uh, by users of your API on the, uh, the pub.dev website, you want to use three slashes. This is an example of a good comment for documentation. And we'll see it further in the example. This is not. So even though you can use two slashes, it will not show up when you're putting comments in for documentation. So please be mindful of that, because if you use two slashes instead of three slashes, you're going to have a bad time. All right. So we see this, uh, this code here, this, um, this call that we'll use in Bash, right? Uh, with the right number of slashes followed by uh, the right description uh, above the methods and, uh, and classes you want to you define and declare, uh, you can now expect that, uh, that when you go on the Dart website, when you go on uh, pub.dev, you'll be able to see the documentation uh, you're looking for. But if you want to test it locally to make sure that what you've written is exactly what you see on the screen, like for example, catching any rogue double slashes instead of triple slashes, you could run this, uh, this bash script, and it'll create local documentation for you. And you'll get something that looks like this. This is essentially an HTML file, uh, and it's local on your machine. So when you click on it, you could open this up, and you could see exactly what it'll look like. And we created this, and it shows the static methods here that we have, lorem, cutesum, and random image URL. And we see that our documentation is listed as well. A static function which returns a formatted string of randomly selected animal baby names. Uh, and another one that returns a randomly selected image <coughs> URL string. So that's good, it works. However, uh, there is uh, a problem with this when you actually go to publish it on the pub site. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So just remember, it's great in the dev stage, but when you're actually <laughs> ready to push it to uh, pub.dev, uh, you're gonna have to remove the folder that contains those. So, uh, to test your package code further, uh, you could write a number of UI or smoke tests to confirm that everything is working as expected, right? Uh, but it's always a good idea to try out your code with a sample app before pushing the package up to the pub site. A good way to do this would be to add the Dart file to an example app project's lib folder, and then import the file into the app you're gonna, uh, you want to use. So uh, once you begin to play around with it, you'll be able to identify any unusual edge cases. Uh, so for example, you might say, oh, well, that's interesting. I ran this three times, and there's already uh, two that are duplicated. So the second one and the third one has that for the title. That's interesting. Maybe it's not quite as random as I'd like. Maybe I should modify it. Different things like that, right? Um, also, creating an example app and, uh, and adding it to your package is a great way to introduce your package's functionality to those who want to try it out first before adding the dependency explicitly to their own projects. So when designing your example app, think about how a user might actually use the functions in the app, right? Uh, can they only be used individually like they are here? Uh, or can they be mapped to a list builder? Maybe you want to use it in some sort of like list view that can recycle over and over again. That's something you'll want to utilize with an example app and that's something that people uh, might want to know about. So if you put that functionality in your app, uh, you're, you're giving them the opportunity to try it before they buy it, as it were. So, once you've gotten your example app in a state where you'd like it to be, you can then place it in its own uh, directory called example, right here within your Flutter project, uh, within the Flutter project hierarchy. You can then take your project, which you worked on separately, and then you can drag it and drop it into the example folder. So you can still keep it separate if you wanted to. You could still use a module uh, or sub-module if you're using um, you know, uh, uh, some sort of version control system and you don't want to necessarily have it in there. Uh, but uh, you could also just as easily drag it and drop it into this folder so people can use it. Good, so uh, just as what was, uh, there was a question earlier that was asked, uh, well, what would be the benefit for using um, a GitHub repository first? This would be the benefit. You haven't quite sent it to, uh, to the pub site yet, so you can uh, pass that dependency to that example app through Git 
rather than using uh, the uh, the pub uh, site explicitly when you run something like uh, pub uh, get or pub update. It's not there. So how are you going to use it? This is how. So there are some files that would uh, would be great if you added content to. Uh, for example, the changelog.md file. The changelog.md file is a way for developers to document the changes uh, made from every new release of a semantic version. So by default, the IDE creates that file uh, with a number of to-dos left open for completion. And we can see that here, this sad changelog file. So uh, we can update it, though. We can add a release date. We can describe the initial release and that it is the initial release. So we already see that the semantic version 0.0.1 uh, it's not consistent with what we have in our YAML file, right? In our pubspec.yaml file. So uh, we should update those values. And then we want to add some new, uh, some content describing the new features that we're adding in this release. Since it's our first release, we can add all the features. And, uh, and we'll do that for the first one because nothing's been modified. So, um, so I'm going to apologize in advance because this might be very hard to read from a distance. Uh, but if you'll see, these are the contents that we put in. Uh, it's in Markdown, so we add it just like you would see on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, this updated changelog goes into great detail about its semantic version, the date of its release, uh, the fact that it's an initial release, its current features, so both methods, uh, its current limitations as well. So you might be asking yourself, hey, I want people to actually use this in the future. Why am I going to put the limitations on it? Because you don't want them to use something and then be disappointed. You want to let them know this is what it can do now and this is what it can't do now. And hopefully, if you're paying attention, you can make a pull request, and then we can make it better. So this gives users of your app, or potential users of your app, or your uh, package, the opportunity uh, to, to make a decision for themselves. So there's a license file. And uh, when choosing a license for an open source public facing API for uh, such a sharing community, us, right? you should consider the following. You want to choose the most permissive software license as possible, so as to help as many developers as possible. If you pick a license that's kind of limiting, A, not many people are going to download it, and B, not many people are going to use it, which is the whole point of making these packages. Licenses like the MIT license, the new BSD, and the Apache 2 are all great choices. Um, if the Flutter team seems to pre uh, prefer BSD, um, I like uh, MIT, uh, it's a little easier to drag and drop into the project and, and I'm okay with people uh, making use of those permissions. Uh, they're, they're relatively similar, uh, in fact they're almost identical, um, but it's up to you to decide. It's, it's really up to you, as long as the permission you choose is very permissible, the license should be very permissible. So feel free to copy and paste your permissive license directly into this license file. But you should modify it, though. These modifications should include your name, if you wish to share that, or the name of your company or firm. If you're a company like uh, Square, for example, that makes uh, Retrofit and Picasso, uh, they, they contribute to the open source community, yet they're a company. Uh, if you have a company and you're active in the open source community, then you could just as easily sponsor a number of packages or plugins through your company. But it's open source, and it's got a permissive copyright, uh, so just know that when you create it. But you want to add uh, the contents of that license, uh, you want to update the year, and you want to update the name of your personal name or your organization. So this one is a bit more self-explanatory. Uh, I think anyone who's ever worked with something like uh, Bitbucket or GitHub, uh, you're familiar with the concept of a readme.md file. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity to elaborate on what has already been described in either your changelog or your Dart uh, doc comments. So you can further explore your reasons for why uh, you developed and released your particular package in the first place, and any steps uh, you'd like to pursue in new iterations of your package. So first, if you'll notice, when you get this uh, built in, uh, in Android Studio or any other IDE, it'll generate it uh, with a getting started section. First, it'll start with saying, uh, this is the name of your project, and then it'll have your description of the project, and then it'll say getting started and then it will promote Flutter for you, which is fine. Flutter's great. Uh, we all love Flutter, but, we, but that's not really descriptive for the project that you're creating, right? This package needs a bit more description. 
So you could delete all that, and then you could add your own contents in there. And you want to make sure that uh, you're filling in the gaps where the change log didn't fill. Uh, so next, you want to describe the problem in detail. And you could use uh, GIFs or illustrations uh, to describe the actual issue uh, your package intends to solve, essentially your problem statement, right? And then finally, share your solution using actual code examples and how your API is expected to behave. So don't forget to add the next steps as well, essentially what it is that you'd like to complete in future iterations. It's also sort of a call to action, right? So you're saying like, in future iterations, we'd like to do these things. Future is not now, now is this, but if you want to, uh, you want to contribute, that would be great. Uh, and then you can make a pull request. You could also let people who are using your package know that if they just stick around and they update, maybe in like three to six months, they could use this version now, knowing that in three months, when that release, that three month release date comes out, they'll have even more functionality. So it gives them the opportunity to invest in something that's growing. Um, and I feel like this is, uh, this is sort of like everyone should know this, um, but I, when I work with my fellows, sometimes my fellows forget this. So uh, if you haven't pushed the Git yet, you want to do this now because explosions can happen going forward. So you want to make sure that you've at least backed it up, right? Okay? Uh, because we made it. We finally made it to the main event, right? Posting the package to pub. So let's recap. We made a Dart package. We wrote tests for it. We created an example app to run it in. We added information to our change log. Uh, to our license and our readme files. And we saved our package to a remote repository. So this is kind of a big deal. So we need to make sure that we've dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's uh, by running a shell command from the bash terminal in the root directory of your project. If you're using uh, Windows, uh, there, you could also use PowerShell or uh, CMD or anything like that, right? Uh, it also has a similar functionality. So when you evaluate the pub package, uh, you want to run this command. Flutter pub pub publish dry run. So, uh, so this is the command you want to use. Uh, it'll make sure that your code passes all the tests it needs prior to being pushed to the pub site. It helps you get prepared. And that's what this command is going to do for us. Um, but you might have noticed something odd about that shell command, like a, like a typo or uh, something out of place. <laughs> Seems really weird. There's a reason for that. It's because there's a glitch with dry run. And this is the actual, um, the actual ticket over on the Flutter Teams uh, GitHub uh, where this is an issue, where, where people tried to build it and it was breaking and then someone said, oh, I wrote pub pub and then it worked. <laughs> so they discovered this. Uh, this is an actual thing. Um, and, uh, and they're on the case though. So they're aware of it and they're trying to fix it. Um, but, uh, but in the past, you didn't have to use that extra pub, and in the future, you will likely not have to use that extra pub, but as of today, you do. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that. So if you're looking at, if you're saying, oh, I really enjoyed this talk, uh, you know, I, I want to make a package, so I went to this tutorial and it told me this command, why isn't this working? This is why. So, uh, you type that, and it doesn't really matter if you have to type a million pubs, right? Because this is what you're looking for. Package has zero warnings. When you do that, when you run, uh, when you run that command, that dry run command, what it's going to do is it's actually going to print up an entire uh, tree of all the files within your uh, project's directory, and then it's going to give it. Uh, you're going to have a statement like this that says, "Hey, everything's cool. You may proceed." You likely won't have that. You might have a couple of warnings, and that's great because it'll give you the opportunity to make those changes before you push it uh, to the pub site. So, uh, so you want to do this because, uh, because this is helpful for your health status uh, for your project. Your project uh, is something that people use, and there's a rating so people know, hey, this is of high value, or no, this is of low value. And warnings, even though you can probably still push this to the pub site without a problem, those warnings uh, will, will make your score drop. And that's what you do not want. So ultimately, and yes, those are two pubs again, uh, you want to post it to the, to, the pubs, uh, to the pub site. 
So once again, due to this glitch, you'll have to enter uh, Flutter Pub Pub Publish rather than uh, Flutter Pub Publish. If you don't, it will simply hang there after only printing that file tree, uh, and it'll do nothing. But when we do follow this direction, you'll be prompted to upload your package. And this is the next step, and you want to see this. Looks great. Are you ready to upload your package, yes or no? Yes. That's right, I do. That's why I'm here. Right? I want to upload it. So you say yes, and then once you say yes, uh, it then sends you, uh, it sends you a link on the bottom of the console, uh, and it's a hyperlink, and, and so you think, maybe I should click it. Don't. Copy and paste the whole thing, because it only uh, hyperlinks part of that whole URL. So you'll click it, you'll get a 404, and you'll be like, what? So avoid this, listen to me, and please copy that entire URL, and then paste it in your browser. All right, and then you get this, and this is, this is exactly what you're looking for. It's updating and it's a successfully uploaded package. And let me tell you, this is quick. Within a couple of minutes of posting this, you'll get an email that says it's done, right? How many of you have posted things to uh, the Google Play Store and, uh, and you waited a couple of hours and you were like, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Uh, and you didn't, it just takes time, right? Uh, how many of you tried to push something to the App Store? How long does that take? Does that take two hours? <laughs> it does not take two hours. You know what takes uh, a really short amount of time? The pub site. So you'll find that link that's sent to you in the email, and it'll, uh, it'll lead you to a page that looks something like this. Uh, it might not have a super adorable kitten, uh, <laughs> but it'll still be pretty close. Uh, and you'll see these tabs on the top. Uh, you'll see your description, your name, uh, the actual description of your package. Uh, and then on the right, you also have some helpful links and it immediately tells you things like your license, the dependencies, uh, and your, uh, your GitHub link if you're using GitHub. GitHub. So, remember earlier when we ran this script and we alluded to this in the discussion where we said, hey, I wanna see what those dark docs look like beforehand to make sure that, uh, that I'm doing the right thing. Right? You ran that script and you got over here, it's great. Uh, but if you try to publish your package to the pub site after doing this, you may encounter this issue. And by may, I mean you will. Because you'll get on the bottom, pub finish with exit code one. You always want exit code zero, right? It's not great when you see that. So you're all excited, you see all these awesome things, and then you get file name collision on case preserving file systems. So the first clue is that there's a collision, right? The second clue is that it lists a file you definitely didn't create. Or did you? Because you did. When you ran that code, it locally generated not just docs for the code that you created, but all the dependencies of that code. And it just so happens that map.html is one of the dependencies of Dark Core. So that was generated, and now that's in there. So you have to actively Go over to the directory and delete that doc folder, the doc folder. Make sure that you do that. If you ran that script, make sure to delete that. All right, so now let's explore the actual site that has your, uh, your package, okay? Uh, we see that there are five tabs, that's five, five tabs uh, listed on the top. We have a readme.md file, a changelog.md, an installing tab, a versions tab, and an analysis score. Uh, that's where you see that 50 uh, and the word new. So that's a clue, right? You're saying, oh my gosh, I got a 50 out of 100. That's, that's not what I intended. I thought I had created something that was useful. You did. It's just that it's brand new and they're letting people know that you got that score not because you created a bad thing or uh, a thing that's not useful. You got that score because it is brand new. That's why that happened. We'll go over how that algorithm determines what your score is in a moment. So first, uh, we have the README tab. And that's the default tab you'll see, right? So this is your README. You have everything that you'll see in your project's readme.md file. The next section is your change log. And this is equally self-explanatory, right? It's the same contents of the change, uh, change log that we put uh, and we showed on the screen earlier. 
The next section is the installing tab, and this gives you instructions, uh, which are pretty useful. It tells you how to make use of this. First, you have to depend on it. In other words, you need to add this dependency. And uh, the dependency is lorem cutesum, lorem underscore cutesum, and then you give the semantic version, uh, preceded by, I want to say, caret, right? Then you need to install it. Uh, and that actually involves pulling from the most recent version of the pub. So you have to run uh, uh, either uh, pub get or pub update and then pub get. And then finally, there's this option that you could use for get independencies, uh, which is the option we discussed earlier through git. Uh, so if it's not available in the pub site yet, you can go through uh, the git repository. Now for the next tab, and the final tab, uh, we have the, uh, the analysis score section. And the score, score is sp split up into three different sections. One for popularity, meaning uh, how many people have actually uh, integrated your uh, package as a dependency. Uh, health, uh, so in other words, uh, are there any warnings? Are there any hints? Um, is there anything dangerous going on with the app that the developer just sort of ignored and pushed anyway, right? And then there's maintenance. How frequently is the developer going on the pub site, or how frequently is the developer uh, pushing uh, new changes, making new semantic versions of the project? Uh, then you have an overall score. And it's actually a weighted score. So it's broken up uh, by these three categories, popularity being 50% of your overall score, health being 30%, and maintenance being uh, 20%. So in total, since you're great on health, because we created a great package together, maintenance is great because we just pushed, right? We just pushed it to the, to the site. So we're at 100% for both of those. So that's 20, and that's 30, and that gives us 50. So it's not that we created something that wasn't worth using, it's that people don't know about it yet and have it integrated into the app. So don't get worried if that score is low for now. But, Packages need care and attention. So I might be dating myself here when I say Tamagotchi, but, uh, but essentially you want, to, uh, you want to keep your packages alive and attended, right? So, uh, so a year ago at the Google Developers uh, Group Meetup in Chelsea last year, uh, there was a great event that, uh, that Martin was a part of. Um, so it was the, the Flutter uh, Meetup and the Google Developers Group. And it was a great opportunity to learn new skills and, uh, and learn more about Flutter and share it with others, either if it's the first time you're working with Flutter or you've been working for it, for working with it uh, since it was in the alpha stage, right? Um, now, at that place, uh, a couple of, like about a week or so before, I made something called avocado toast, right? So I love Android, and I love the idea that uh, you could put little toast messages on there. How many of you are familiar with an Android toast? Good, yeah, most of you, right? Uh, now, because of material design reasons, they opted to not use toast and instead snack bars, which is totally fine. That's great. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm old and afraid of change, and I like things that I like. So I wanted to create something that was a toast. Uh, and I had a lot of fun making it, and I got to share it with, uh, with the people there, and everyone had a blast uh, looking at those animations. And I was really excited, really pumped. And, uh, and in fact, uh, a developer from the UK was super awesome, uh, Simon Lightfoot, uh, saw what I, I, what I posted in one of the forums, and he reached out to me and he said, hey, you know, there's, I really like what you've done here. Why don't you make things a little better? Here are some tips and ways in which you can do it. So it was very helpful, and I was really excited, but life got in the way. Uh, I, was, uh, I was a new developer who just graduated from a boot camp, and I just changed careers, and everything in my life had changed for the better, but I also had a lot more things I had to do. Uh, so because of that avocado toast, uh, was left to turn brown in the corner, and, uh, and so I was unable to do anything with it. So because of it, just like a Tamagotchi, if you do not take care of it, it will not be around anymore. And so we see here, um, the score is dropped all the way to zero. And one of the biggest things that changed it, that brought it to zero, is it didn't support Dart 2. The range for support uh, was, uh, was, I believe it was like 1.1 to like 1.9. So as long as it was between one and two, you could use avocado toast. Well, guess what? Everything is two. It's all two, all day, every day. So in order for me to get this back uh, on the place, not on the place, or in order for me to get it back on the pub store, I need to update it and give it some attention. 
which is why we created a new one today. By the way, you want to be the open source, okay? Uh, when I got this t-shirt, I never thought I'd be able to use it, and now I can, and I feel like my life has come full circle. So, uh, so when we're talking about uh, open source, we're sort of feeding onto what we had previously, right? Uh, we've described this process, and we see that it's actually not that hard to do. Um, and if you uh, want to create this, you can just follow these steps, uh, of which there aren't that many, and you can create a really cool package that other people can use, right? Um, you want to be the open source change that you want to see in the world. So Aldo Flutter is really incredible, and it's an almost magical framework. Like when I heard about it, I thought I was, I thought I was observing magic. I was just so shocked after dealing with Java for so many years that things could be so easy. Um, and uh, even though it's fun, and even though it does a lot of cool things, there's still a long way to go, and there's still some some gaps that could be filled. And although we can wait for the Flutter team to, to do that, or we could wait for, um, for more experienced developers to do that, if there's something you want that doesn't exist and no one's done it yet and you're tired of making pull requests and you're tired of making comments, maybe it's time for you to make that attempt. And you could definitely do that here. It's a great way to uh, make Flutter all the more adaptable and constructive. But this is sort of a clarion call, right? Uh, maybe you've had an app or two um, that uses Flutter. Maybe you're a first time developer and you thought it would be great to experiment with Flutter. Um, or maybe you're a, a junior dev just looking for their first big break, right? Uh, how many of you have gone to interviews recently as a junior dev or a mid-level dev? Anyone? Uh, great, cool. Uh, I went to interviews recently. I just got my job at Backbase after working for Oracle for a year and a half. It was great and I loved Oracle, but I was ready for a change. And, uh, and when I went for that interview, uh, they asked me the same questions just like that. Ask every single junior developer that wants to join the tech ecosystem here in New York City and around the world, hey, what have you been working on lately? Oh, hey, what are other contributions you've made to the open source community? Uh, now, if you want to contribute to something that all, let's say, Android developers use, uh, like uh, Picasso and Retrofit, uh, you kind of have to know your stuff before you can jump in there. It's a great framework, or rather, it's a great library, uh, and the people who contribute to it are great and amazing. Um, but if you're a budding developer, you might not be that familiar with that stack or, or the level of code that you'll need to know, right? Um, but if you're familiar with Dart, you can make a brand new package. And this package uh, can then be used when you go to interviews and you say, hey, well, you know, um, uh, I'm, you know I'm just starting out and I'm tinkering with websites and I'm tinkering with Flutter and I made this, pl uh, this plugin or I made this package for Flutter. And they're like, oh, wow, so you didn't just make an app, you made it something uh, that's under the hood that people use and doesn't get any glory. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Maybe maybe you're a real developer, you know? Um, but it's also more than that. Maybe you're intimidated by the idea of making something from scratch, right? Uh, so you can just contribute. You can just contribute. You can just make a pull request. So this package that I showed you guys, uh, Lorem Qtum, I it was literally born yesterday, okay? It is a, a package all about baby animals, and it is a baby itself, right? So it's got simple functionality. If you want to contribute uh, to an open source project, you could just as easily come up with, uh, with a line of code that contributes to this. And then you could expand on it, and you could experiment with it, and you could say, hey, I really enjoy making, uh, making packages. Maybe now I'll make a Flutter app. Or hey, I now have the confidence to, uh, to move on and start applying for a new job. So um, definitely use uh, making packages or contributing to pre-existing packages, uh, something that you integrate uh, into your development career. So I just wanna thank everyone for coming here today. Uh, this is a very intimate spot. Um, and uh, and you know it's on a Thursday and not many people are uh, ready to come out, but I really appreciate the fact that you guys made it. Um, but looking forward to listening to to uh, Todd's talk in a little bit. And I want to thank uh, Martin uh, Ryan for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Um, I, this was a blast. This is a dream come true. Um, and thank you, of course, to Flywheel for hosting us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so if you have any questions about tonight's presentation or you want to reach out, you can reach out to me on Twitter at JD Vila Codes. And uh, this Sunday, I'm posting a blog for the first time. So if you want to check that out, it's called Widget for, Widgets for Days, where I literally like find the widget, and then I just write about it for four pages. Uh, there's, a, there's an article I have on, uh, on text widgets that's like 2,000 words long. So thank you. <laughs>